Okay, I got a song for you this morning called One Mint Julep. And I know it came from the late 50s or early 60s because I remember playing it when I was in college and it was during that period of time. Uh, it's, it's not a complicated song, it's not all that hard to play. And I'm not going to play it note for note. I think I'm in the same key. No, I, I actually, I believe it's recorded in B flat. But that may be because he tuned up one one fret. He had a penchant for doing a penchant for doing that. I don't know why, but I backed it up to A. It makes it so much easier to play. And like with this song, with all the Chet songs I do, they're not note for note. I don't try to play them note for note. I just try to get the stylist effect, get you get the song so people know what you're playing, and then let let you ad lib or improvise. But anyway, here's the way the song goes, I think. saxophone I think even a piano takes a lead here and it starts in C sharp and all the guitar is doing is playing rhythm and it goes back to C It's a nice little song, and you can play and add and improvise, and there may even be words that I don't know. It was recorded by several people. So, and also, if you don't want to play it like that, you can play your A up here. Chet's number one, James Burton would be number two. In his lead in Hello Mary Lou, he uses a pattern very similar, at least to the beginning of this. He plays. <laughs> it's pretty much that same pattern. But anyway, start with your A. A seventh, D, D seventh. Strings your melody note. That may 
be the only part of the song that's a little bit tricky. It's a, it's a D chord on the second fret. I mean, on the second string, first fret. The first string open. I can't do it without doing it fast. string on the second fret. Well, you just hold your A chord and then with your middle finger you're going to come down the neck. You do a little crossing there. Or you can play the whole chord or at least two or three notes. Charles did it one time.